So the spine was cut with the multi-tool. Cut half inch down, four, I went with four inches wide. Three screws pre-drilled with a countersink. The first two I used my exterior deck screws, which are one and a quarter inch. But then on the back two, because there was more flex, my dad suggested going with a two inch, a little bit longer, just so it had more hold into the ceiling joists. So now, there's no flex anywhere. We took a piece of the plywood that I will be using on the roof. We cut a thin stripe of it, and then we bent that. We held it down, clamped it to each of the ceiling joists to find the curvature of the roof. And then I struck, struck a line from the underside, and that's this bottom line. Yesterday we did it from above, but realized that was wrong. So first things first is we bent it, struck the line on both sides. Now we have a good idea of the shape of the curve or the curvature of the roof what it will be once it's uh, nailed down so the next step is going to be coming in with the jigsaw and starting to whittle the sides down to this curved line i'm going to take it off in chunks i'll come down here take this piece off and just slowly get closer to this line once we have the side curvature now the roof will sit on top of the side walls on top of the plywood everywhere so that the roof is coming you know it's the roof's on top rather than this so i think that's better and then when i hit with the fiberglass now i'll be able to drape the fiberglass because the roof will be on top drape the fiberglass over a little bit and then put the trim over that so that's the plan. Jigsaw cut the rough curve. When we put the plywood down, we'll use the clamps to hold it where we can't, and then try and take these measurements to find where we're screwing into the ceiling joists.
So to find the ceiling joist on the inside, we measured the ceiling joist. The center of the ceiling joist was one inch in from the edge of the cedar. So to find that, we were taking the measuring tape from the outside, there's an overhang, measuring the overhang. So that one's what, two and three quarters. Then we come out and add an inch to get three and three quarters or whatever that was. That one wasn't three and three quarters, but that's how we did it. You can see they're not like perfectly in line because the back walls aren't perfectly in line. But that's the way we found it. We didn't miss one. That's credit to my dad. That's the way to do it for anybody else. We got them all down super easy. Now you can see the shape of the structure, the shape of the roof, the complex curves, which for the most part were pretty much just guesstimated on my end. The second post is a little higher, so you have, you can see the slope running off. If water hits here, it'll come off the front corner. Everything else down here is running off the back and off the corners. These two back corners are lower than the center. And you can see how many screws I use to get this thing down. My dad had to stand and sit up here to try and bend the plywood. I mean, apparently Endgame did it by himself. I don't know how he did it. Two people's highly recommended. I use two and a half inch screws for the most part. Besides going into the spine, I only use inch screws because this is half inch or 15, 30 seconds. And then my plywood spine was half an inch. So I barely the tip of the screws poking through on the interior, but that will be hidden by, I'm gonna put the polystyrene foam insulation, just punch it up into these gaps, spray glue some fabric on it. So it's a headliner. And I'm gonna cut out circular puck size holes and put in those battery powered puck lights. So there's some type of recessed lighting. But this is it. I can't believe this thing.
All right, I hit this with two coats. Um, the overlapping pieces didn't get completely saturated. Um, I've never done this resin before and everything online is kind of tricky. I did a test on a small piece of plywood last night and it seemed to work out all right. Apparently you're supposed to wait for the second coat until it's tacky like masking tape. This probably took me an hour and a half to do the whole thing. So by the time I was done over here, I went back over there and felt it. And part of it was a little tacky, part of it was not tacky at all, which got me worried that I was drying too fast. And if it dries, then you got to sand in order to do it again. Um, I cut off all the trim. There's excess. You can still see some pieces and I took a razor blade and cut it flush. There's the scraps. So, you know, I don't, I'm out of the resin that I bought. I did buy an extra set, which cost me about $80. And right now I'm in between, do I want to open it and give it one last coat or do I say this is good enough and make a return on that? put a, another coat of resident epoxy on. As you can see, it is finally turning into that glassy um, where the fabric underneath is almost invisible. This is the second day of me doing it. Um, I didn't film any of the process due to working with the 205 fast hardener. Yesterday I was on the 206, this was all they had. So I didn't want to be messing around with the camera. Also again, sticky hands and whatnot. Um, so here it is, way, now it's actually looking like glass, like fiberglass, and I get it. Um, I still wasn't able to find the West Systems foam rollers that they tell you to get, which have a 1 8 inch nape to it. The closest I could find were these quarter inch ones. I think they absorb too much and they've left a bit of a stipple, which is some of the uh, texture you're seeing. But then I came through and they also say you're supposed to tip it, which is they cut their foam brushes and then like drag it at an angle, low angle. And I believe tipping just means smoothing it out. I could be wrong. So I tried tipping by just holding that an extra one of those stationary and just dragging it really slowly and it seemed to smooth it out somewhat. Um, I didn't want to do this coat to be honest. The more research I did, the more people I talked to, again I don't know anything about this so instead of returning the extras and getting 80 bucks back I figured I would rather have invested that 80 bucks in another layer of security in terms of weatherproofing, waterproofing. So now I have three layers of epoxy on here, six ounce fiberglass, and I think that'll be good enough for Southern California weather. It's not completely invisible. Um, I guess I can throw one more on. Again, I don't want to. I didn't want to do this coat. Maybe I'll change my tune once this is dried, but for now, I think it's definitely in a much better place than it was this morning when I left it. Um, in order to put the second coat on today, because I had waited an entire almost 24 hours, I had to sand it with 220 grit. I had to wipe the blush off, which apparently is a byproduct of the um, 205 and 206 hardening. And to do that, you use water, and one of these 3M Scotch pads. This is the 7447 model. And I literally, I don't know if I did it right, but it seemed to work. I filled a cup with water, was dunking this, and then brushing it off until the sh whatever sheen I could see turned into a matte finish. And then I was wiping it dry with paper towels as I went. And then once that pre-process was done, this guy was ready 
for its um, third shirt, <laughs> its third coating of uh, fiberglass. So that's that. That's it for now.